I got a top ten. Got my motivation high for my top ten. Gotta learn from the wise women and men. Hey, it's Evan Carmichael, and I make these videos because chances are you are the most ambitious person in your circle, but you know you're capable of more, and you get that push by surrounding yourself with the best. So today, let's learn from one of the best, Gary Vaynerchuk, and my take on his top 10 rules for success. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with rule number one. Be grateful. Let's come out of this leaning into humility and gratitude, and that will be the springboard to everything you want. Mm. If you can, like, just be grateful. Yes, you lost your job or your business is not as good, but your grandfather didn't die from Corona. You know, just be grateful. Like grateful for the time you're spending with family now, grateful for the innovation time, the thinking time. I'm sleeping more than ever. I put on a couple pounds, so I gotta be a little bit more careful, but I'm gaining real muscle. I'm starting to really do it out here. Strong, man. Let's play Um, some ball soon. uh, But I'm not gonna gonna dodge you on that. You're too good. But um, gratitude and humility. Rule number two, have no regrets. Other people I'm watching here are 24 and are regretting shit already. I'm like, okay, I need to help them think about this because that's a bad framework because if you regret, if you're that insecure, if, you're that, if that's your perspective, then you have no right answer. Because if you go and travel and you're 34, you're, whatever you are financially or professionally at 34, you're gonna be like, I should have worked more, fuck Argentina. If, if, you know, or if you do the other thing and you work your face off, you'll be like, Fuck. I ended up just like Fuck Gary. I, all my friends had fun and yeah, I got a million bucks in the bank but I'm sad because I wish I went to the beach more often. So, so either you're in that framework or you're not which is, which is a great way to put a bow on everything I've been telling you. You want to blame other people, the government, Google, knock yourself out. You will go to the grave blaming somebody for something. Rule number three, love the game. I think people have now aspired to be an entrepreneur when they're not, and those are the people that are going through depression, are suicidal, are unhappy, because they're in a game that doesn't match them. Mm. So when I say that, it leads, I'm playing chess. It's never a one size fits all. I wanna see what the person says next. Mm. I'm looking for the tell. Mm. Got it, Mm. brother? Yeah. I'm I'm like, you know, well, listen, don't, don't overstress. You got patience. Your 20s is a good high risk, high reward time. If it's in you, like, if you said that to me, if Gary said to Gary, yo, go to Europe, go this, I'd be like, fuck you. Right, me too, me too. Well, yeah. that's what I'm looking for. Okay. Because when the kid says, yeah, you're right, I'm like, uh-huh. Yeah. I <laughs> okay. And I, cu- I couldn't breathe. Yeah. And I couldn't breathe. Yeah. I had to, I had to do it every second. I couldn't breathe. This is on, when you're a natural purebred, you're in Beyonce, LeBron, pa- Pablo Picasso category. You're an artist. Yeah. You're an artist. There was no choice. I'm not doing this for the flex or the gram or the money or the house or the jet or the, I don't want a single thing. I don't want to be part of any exclusive club. I don't need an island. I don't need a house. I need the game. Yeah. I need the game. Rule number four, break the patterns. Sales and marketing is mixed. And that means you're actually doing sales. And if marketing is put into a place where it's all upside, because marketing is gray. It is intuitive, right? So if if the rule is 500,000, I'm just making shit up. And like, there's no, like at the end of the day, it's like, if if you were the head of it for me, I'd be like, it's 500,000 and my team will tell you this. James will definitely tell you this. It's like, I don't give a We'll talk at the end of the year. Explain yourself. (laughs) But I have no Judgment. I'm not booing or cheering along the game. Just tell me when it's triple zero and explain to me why we lost 112 to 88 or why we won 112 to 88 and you just hold that person accountable. That's how marketing needs to work because that's marketing. You have to be able to do something ridiculous like buy $50,000 worth of bananas and send them to dentists just because it's so ludicrous that they're like, what the f***? You see where I'm going now? Like, like as, as silly as what I just said to you, 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 you would be shocked how smart what I just said actually is based on how silly it sounds. The world is busy. The way you break through is by breaking patterns. If you're a f-ing dentist and you get a banana sent to you in the mail and you wrote a note on it in pen, that's just weird. Weird enough to give you awareness. 
Also, if you want to build more confidence, the sign says it can take up to 254 days of consecutive action to successfully build a habit. So I've created a free program for you where every day for 254 days, I will send you an unlisted video to your email absolutely free to help you build your confidence. The link to join is in the description below. We are strong as We're really strong. We're just being sold that we're not because there's a lot of money in a success world, please understand that success is happiness, not net dollars in. I always choose positivity. Uh, I look at other people around me, it's not just about me that are winning, they choose positivity. I look at the people around me that are not winning, that are not progressing, that are not advancing, they're choosing negativity. Rule number five, have self-awareness. I do not like negativity. And so in my early years, since I started running companies right from the beginning, my historic vulnerability that I continue to work on and is far great in a better place than it used to be is in my unbelievable disdain for confrontation and negativity, I wasn't uh, candorous enough and would surprise people when I would fire them. And also created a level of entitlement which usually led to the firing because they weren't getting negative feedback, they were just getting positive reinforcement. And, and then suddenly something happened. And they became delusional. No, and unfortunately, it wasn't that suddenly something happened. For the last three years, they've always been bad at these three things. I just don't focus on negatives. I focus on positives. They don't hear anything about it. And then they get called into the meeting probably thinking they're about to get a raise because four weeks ago I gave them a high five about something they do do well. And then I'm like, hey Jan, hey Rick, you know, we're gonna have to talk about you not being here. And they would be flabbergasted and I would defend my actions to myself in my 20s and early 30s on their delusional, how did they not know, couldn't they tell. But, but a lot of people don't deploy the self-awareness that I was gifted with. It's not, you know, uh, and, and more importantly, employees always have other side, like everybody, there's always two sides to a story. So over the last three or four years, and I'll tell you that my brother AJ, who was 22 years old when he became my partner at VaynerMedia 10 years ago, he is far, you know, uh, he's a good balance. My dad is overcritical and only focused on the negative. So I think I naturally was over positive, but then being in the same company with him and a father son, I almost had to be 100% positive to offset 100% negative, and that's the truth. Rule number six, face your fears. You need to figure out who you're most upset about losing in front of. What if it's literally everybody? (laughs) That's great, then you need to start really thinking about creating behavior to make yourself lose more. You basically are in the same place that a slow maturing 11 year old is who hasn't started swimming yet. The only answer to your question is to jump in the pool. If you were like my younger sister, I would tell you that everything you should do for the next five years are things that you're likely gonna lose at until it becomes so numb that it changes your relationship with losing. Losing, hating to lose in the way that you're describing it is completely predicated on not being able to deal with other people's judgment. And that is a tough spot to be in. You know? You gotta reconcile that with, I'm probably the most competitive person I've ever met. Or just in the mix with the other people. So I'm trying to win. I don't want to lose, but I respect the game enough to accept it and I weirdly get good tingles from it because it excites me to try again. Rule number seven, follow the 80-20 rule. Everybody f***s up marketing because they're gonna always lean into sales because they need to hit short-term objectives. The end, that's where leadership has to come in and create rules for engagement. It's why I love 80-20. It's why I love Army and Navy SEALs. It's why I win. I create businesses like Vayner that is my foundation of 80 and then I taste with 20% around it. That's how Vayner X got built and then even outside the Vayner universe, that's how the K-Swiss and the Empathy Wines and all that, this is how it all works. 
that's marketing. Because yeah. everybody's a sales, like you're a sales organization. Yeah. So Absolutely. let's put a little fund on the side or a little team on the side and that's marketing. Mm-hmm. And if it goes to dead zero, you've decided at the macro level that $800,000 to dead zero is super fine by me. Because you know it's not gonna be dead zero but now you've created autonomy and lack of confusion and to actually make that happen. Rule number eight, be practical. If you actually knew that you would never find out what the alternative was, shit would get real good. You know how easy it is for me to make decisions? Super easy. Do you know why? I wouldn't know what the alternative was. You don't overthink it. Because you, it's not practical. I don't have time to dwell on the fact that I passed on Uber twice, which was my best friend of any investment that I made. Every person I invested in was not as close to me as Travis was, and for some miraculous, cosmic reason, I passed on Uber twice, which made up, means that my $50,000 investment, which would have been worth $700 million today, didn't happen. And when I tell you I don't think about it at all, here's why. I'm smart and thoughtful enough about knowing how life works. Had I made that investment, everything would be different. Maybe I'd be going to India to give a keynote about that investment because I would have a much bigger profile, much different resources, and maybe in that private flight, maybe that flight would have gone down and I would be dead. So you just don't overthink the other possibilities because I always find that that's hard. It's the biggest weakness everyone has. Yeah. They're trying to spend time on something that doesn't exist. There is no time machine. Sorry you picked the wrong school or sorority or girlfriend or major. Sorry. What are we gonna do, you, what? You, we're gonna build a time machine here? That's your practical optimism? Sure is. <laughs> Cause it's both optimistic and way more practical. Rule number nine, treat your employees well. What is the one piece of feedback you're most curious The to truth. Get? Yeah, but about what? Whatever the hell is in front of them. Running an operation is not a education or philosophical exercise. What do I want? I want to know exactly what is an issue operationally right this second to you from your perspective in you running your world. And how can I help? On your, on your leadership, what are you most curious about? The reverse of that coin. What can I do to put you in the best position to succeed? Are you looking to talk to me more often? Are you talking to me less? Do you need, fi- do you need some leeway with your financial P&L? Do you need me to rah-rah the troops? Do you want me to go talk to the most senior client because the client that you work with, which is the second most senior client, is giving you a very difficult time? I am in the ambulance, firefighting, emergency doctor, bat phone business. I am only built to act in helping for you to succeed within this framework. And rule number 10, the last one before a very special bonus clip is build momentum. The things we said no to that were actually the trigger to a hotter, to a streak, to a heater, that we said, I, I, I hope that heaven is where it shows you what life would have been based on choices. I love that I didn't go to some night where at night would have been these two people that would have made this deal with me. Like, I love knowing that like momentum is based on choice, that I've missed momentum many times in my life and that I've gotten momentum many times in my life. And I love that part of the game actually, which is like decisions actually matter. And sometimes when you have the humility to go to a thing that doesn't seem right, you get, you get something that triggers a domino. And sometimes when you go to something you're like, I, I mean, I remember, sitting down, there's one meeting I remember very vividly with Howard Schultz. I had a meeting with Howard Schultz to kind of just, I was getting hot, getting in this, you know, and like I got connected. I remember sitting four minutes before it. I'm like, I'm about to walk in here and I'm about to blow this dude's face off and it's going to be a foundational thing. I walked in, we had a 15 minute meeting, 20 minute meeting and nothing's happened. And I didn't feel like I had an off day. I felt like I gave it, but it didn't click. Whereas yes. when, I, when I went to go see Jimmy Iovine, uh, for this meeting, I'm like, I'm gonna go blow his face off. Within three minutes, he's like, you're next Simon Cowell. And he casted me in the Apple show, Planet of the Apps, with Will I Am, Gwyneth Paltrow, and Jess Calba. And if that show actually got seen, unfortunately, it was before all the OTT stuff and the way TV, like, that would have been white. And that would have been one of the moments. So, you know, the reality is, is that... Wow. 
Wow. You know, like I love that kind of shit. And then I love, I'm trying to think of like something good where like, who'd I meet randomly? Like, I'm trying to think of a real logical thing. Well, you know, I, I took a meeting with the Jets president at a bagel store because he wanted to sell me a skybox. I told him about where the world was going. We became great friends. That's Matt Higgins, who's on Shark Tank, who's Steve Ross's mm-hmm. right hand. There, that led to him leaving the Jets years later, going to Steve Ross and Dolphins. That became the gentleman who bought a piece of my company. And like that, became, that bagel meeting became a monster meeting for me, and I didn't know who Matt Higgins was going into it. So I, 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 I love chance. I love momentum, and I love what starts momentum. That's where I just took this. Yeah. I agree more than any, to remind everybody right now, say yes. You know one thing that I hate about people that haven't achieved anything and people that have achieved everything? They overvalue their time. And it's a tricky one. If you haven't gotten there yet, what should, people are like, Gary, I'm not doing that pro bono work. I should be compensated. I'm like, bro, your, wor- your work's worth nothing. Like there's 700,000 video makers yeah. that, I can, that I can tweet right now. Like, sorry. Like, like when your work's not worth anything, like when, no humility. And then, and, then on the, and then again, no humility. When people get fancy, they don't take, I take so many small meetings. I do so many things like tea with Gary Vee in the morning during this COVID crisis to like just help. And once every 8,000 times, it helps me. Now I've got a special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy. But before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know what was your single biggest takeaway from this video and what is your plan of action that you're going to execute this week to make some immediate momentum happen? When you just get motivated and watch a video, you have a 35% chance of following through. That's what the science says. But when you write down what time, what day, what place you're actually going to execute, when you create the plan, you have a 91% chance of following through and I want that for you and when you commit to people publicly you increase your chances even more of actually doing it so I want to know what your single biggest takeaway from this video was and your specific plan of action to actually get the result you're after let me know put it down in the comments below because I want to celebrate you I am blown away by how many employees have made judgments on their organizations without trying to address it. The amount of my employees that come into my office on year three call my bluff finally to address something. I address it in 48 hours, within a month, whatever the issue is. They come back and say, I can't believe you did it, and then give me 31 other things that happened in the first 36 months of their tenure, but they decided to be cynical. They vet with their friends at a beer. They talk about it in the girl's bathroom. They tell their mother, but they never told me or the organization. It is the great shortcoming of employees in our world today. My friends, call the company's bluff. Call the bluff. I mean, if you haven't gone to HR or to the CEO or however your world is structured, well then you have no legs to stand on that the company stinks. If you have and they haven't delivered, vent away. But until you call the bluff, then you're just complaining because you like to complain. Evan, thank you so much for having a couple seconds and being able to tell the Believe Nation a little bit about Empathy Wines. It means a lot to me that you would take this valuable real estate and, and time on your channel to give me some love. It means a lot. It's just good karma points, and so you're just, you're awesome, thank you. Believe Nation, uh, if you're into wine at all, go to empathywines.com. My whole career's work was poured into producing a wine that rivaled 40 to $60 wine for 20 bucks a bottle. Uh, I'm just super excited about this subscription-based wine business. You can order three, six, or 12 bottles in subscription form, rosé, white, red. Um, if, you, if you search on Instagram or, or Twitter, you will be blown away. People are literally like, I don't even like Gary Vee, but the line's good. Super proud of the effort. Thanks, Evan, for the time. Uh, wishing you guys all happy and healthy. If you wanna change your life in the next 30 days for free, check out my training right here below. Or if you want 10 more awesome rules from Gary Vee, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy them. Continue to believe and I'll see you there.